today. Yeah. But basically, that's why we would claim it's not a contradiction because we're not ascribing the same qualities to just one nature at the same time. If I said Jesus has one nature, a human nature, and in that human nature, he's uncreated, he's omnipotent, uh, and also he's, he's, uh, he can get crucified and sleeps, then you can accuse me of having a contradiction if I ascribe them both to one nature. So, yeah. okay, if I say Jesus is all-knowing, yeah. am I being correct? Yeah, 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 you are, because um, when you want to then ascribe something to a person, uh, you don't ascribe it to just their natures, you ascribe to it to, to, to the subject, the person itself. So, what so, would be more is Jesus' is divine form? No, 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 no. no. What do you think, what do you think uh, first of all, correct? Jesus is God, Jesus is all-knowing, and you can also say things like, for example, like, uh, like you know, uh, God got hungry, or God died on God the cross, died, right. Mary you can say God, that, yeah. right? Because when you talk about a person, you don't regularly refer to their nature. You refer to, like you said, the subject. Yeah. Like for, for example, example if, if I rob yeah. a bank, my name is David, by the way. You say, "Oh, David's human nature." What? Oh, nice. Well, well okay. Well, um, if 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 if, if, if David, if, if, if David and and Dawood, if David and Dawood rob a bank, we're not gonna say, "Oh, Dawood's human nature robbed the bank." No, Dawood did it, right? So in the same capacity, because Jesus is both, you know, God and man, uh, what, whatever actions he commits, we can ascribe them to the single person of Jesus who is God. Okay. So I'm sure you've heard the, yeah. the fig tree uh, yeah. situation. Can you... Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a number of ways that you can look at that. The way that I, I uh, interpret that one in particular, uh, and you may have a different from one, is um, when you have the person of Jesus, there are some kinds of knowledge that Jesus does gain as, as time goes on, right? But then these bits of knowledge are like experiential. For example, if I told you like, does Allah know what the, the salt on like the air smells like on a beach in the morning? The answer is no, because he hasn't experienced that physically. But then, right, but the, 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 does he know it from an experiential point of view? Yeah. So. No, but he won't know what it. But he has an experience. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't. Mean yeah. He know what it is. So. Yeah. So you could just say. It's. I mean. It's. If he is all knowing. Yeah. Well, well, he he wouldn't know it experientially because he hasn't experienced it yet. He knows what the experience would be like, so he does know. Well, how would he know what the experience would feel like if he's not physical? Uh, you you I, could just word it in this way. Look, mm -hmm. when we talk about Jesus in his humanity, we say that he is relatively omniscient. But when we're talking about the divinity, it's absolute omniscience, right? Because there's two minds in the incarnation, a human mind and a divine mind that are distinct. Now, what we mean by relative omniscience is just that everything that could possibly known, uh, be known according to your proper nature and how you are is what is known by him because he is perfected by beatifying grace as a man, right? So all of those things that he could know according to his nature, he could know. So then the question is, if you're going to say he didn't know something, then you would just say that that thing he didn't know would just be something that wasn't according to the full capacity of knowledge in his nature. But I mean, there are interpretations as well that say that he did know about the fig tree, but the well, reason he to why... To show, yeah, uh, the, yeah. Okay, so... My, you buy that? Yes. Uh, my my interpretation that, is more that he did know yeah. because he wasn't looking for figs, right? At that time in, mm -hmm. is, uh, in Palestine, right? On the fig trees, something called catch grows on them, if you're familiar with Palestinian trees, right? And he goes over to the tree, not just because of the shallow reading of he's just hungry, mm -hmm. but because it's symbolic of Israel and their fruits. So if you read the Old Testament, the Israelites, the fruits of them is symbolized by the fig tree, right? Now, if there is no fruits on the tree, what is that symbolic of? It's symbolic of bad fruits and that they've rejected the Messiah, etc. So when he curses the fig tree, it's a foreshadowing. And the reason why he's done that is to prophesy the falling of the second temple of the Israelites. And that's why he's gone to the tree to curse it. Otherwise, why would the biblical authors just record a random story about Jesus cursing a fig tree? Seems pretty irrelevant, right? until you actually read it according to its proper historical context.
So when you see the historical context of a book, it's not that the author is going to say, hey, and by the way, this is the context, because they're writing to the audience that that context is relevant to. So any first century Jew that picks up the Gospel of Matthew or something like that and reads this story, they're going to think, oh, I know what this is talking about because I've read the Old Testament and I know what the fig tree is symbolic of for Israel. And if there's no good fruits on it, it's clearly a condemnation of the Israelites rejecting the Messiah. Right? And also, because we're not like, you know, Christian Quranis, right? The description wouldn't just be within the Bible itself. Wait, Christian what? Well, because we're not Christian Quranis, right? Can you, can you, I think he's referring to you, 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 you mentioned, like, you know, does the Bible say that? Hadith. Yeah. Oh, okay, like, those, okay. those people, yes. You mentioned that, you know, everything he mentioned, does the Bible actually say that? Oh, has uh, the Bible app got a new, like... like oh, the interface? Bible app looks, looks, looks quite nice very now. interesting it's, now. It's, it's, it's sleek. My, uh, it's pretty on. clean. Let me have a look at this. So, real quick, right? So, the this story that you mentioned, right? Uh, just to show you that he isn't like making it up, right? So, the fig tree incident happens here in Mark 11, right? And then um, there's a lesson from it. So, and as they passed by the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, um, have uh, have yeah, faith in God. Idea. Truly, I, I say I to you, like whoever that. says to this mountain, be taken up and be thrown into the sea, and does not doubt oh, in his yeah, heart, but really believes nice. uh, that what he says will this come to pass, it, nice, it will be done to him. Like Therefore, like I tell you, yeah. whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whatever um, you stand, uh, sorry, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So it wasn't just done for a, a, a random reason. There was like a yes. lesson behind it, effectively. When he, uh, he just doesn't do things like randomly yeah. to show he's so cool. And the biblical authors wouldn't yeah. just include a story with uh, no uh, meaning. Uh, <laughs> obscure story with no meaning. It's either yeah. one of two things, to reveal more about who he is or to show us a way that we can potentially live more righteously through parables. Because the problem is, if you only come given rules and regulations, there might come a time when those rules and regulations aren't possible to practice anymore. Take, for example, the Jews. They had all these rules around a temple. Temples been gone for a while. Had to sort of reinvent the religion a little bit. We, we mostly use just like, like parables and um, and uh, sort of like, um, what's that word? Uh, I, what, what we use. There's also much like rule-based. Uh, we use like, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the word. Uh, There's a more simple word for it. Holistic? Not quite that, no. Uh, principled. Principled. Uh, we, we see sort of like a, a, a principled interpretation of what Jesus teaches. So it can be applied differently on different contexts if, if times change. And it can be more flexible than if, if Jesus said, make sure you wash your hair at 4.30 a.m. every morning. Well, what if you're in the desert and there's no water? Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. So would, so, that, would that be the same thing about when, like, about the hour or? Oh, uh, with yeah, the yeah, hour. Yeah. So, so we, we we discussed that earlier actually. So with, with the hour, um, the, the, there's a number of different ways that you can look at it. Um, I just find the simplest like way. Three. Yeah, the simplest way is, is to. Oh, really? We were talking about this earlier. Okay. Yeah, we talked so about this earlier. So the simplest way is to um, a, a, appeal to the Greek, but in a way that isn't as annoying as what Siraj does. So very quickly, um, oh, if you, you can, I, I would accept. Do you want me to go let's back just to go, the, go back once. I'll, yeah. I'll go to the Greek for you go. now. Yeah. Mark 13. Um, I think it's probably the, the simplest uh, way of, of looking at it, right? So uh, what you have here is like you know like, like the, the Greek word and the actual Greek text mm. and then the the English so concordance, can right? You read. Yeah, I, I'm going to read the whole thing. Yeah. So just very the Greek word literally says word for word, right? Concerning now and the day. That all the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, if, if not, not the, the Father. Father. That's a condition. So, meaning if the Father doesn't know it, the then Son. The son Allah. Allah. Look, 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 look at this guy. Honestly, first, first, the first, person first to time. The first time. Well Yo, <laughs> repeat after me. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. <laughs> I, I, and the next question is going to be, well, why is it translated weird? 
in the English, you have different kinds of tra yeah. traditions. You can do word for words, yes you can, but you might miss out on, on like context. Yeah. yeah. It's the closest you're going to get. So, but so, in the Bible, they don't really translate word for word. So, so the, word, the word e there, yeah. right? The yeah, unless you're looking at it from a scholastic approach, you're looking at word for word, most people who read the Bible just want to see the overall meaning of it. So they'll take a more sort of easier to read translation like the NLT or the NIV mm. over something like this. If you're looking at descriptively word for word to see what each word means, interlinear, that's what we look at. Yeah. So the interpretation is that the son wouldn't know the hour if the father doesn't. He got but it man, first try. The same he got divine it knowledge, <laughs> then that wouldn't contradict anything, right? Because they have the same mind, because of course that would be true. Uh, just a quick question, I, I think it might even be a yes or no. So last week I was told here in the park by Orthodox Christian that a Muslim can go to heaven. Now I also, I always believe that unless Unless you believe in Christ as your savior, yeah. you will not go to heaven. So Did he there... provide more context behind how? This is going to it's going to be a complicated a question. Go to heaven if he accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because then he's not a Muslim. No, no, no. No, no. He said the opposite. He said you can be a Muslim and still go to heaven. Did he explain how? Well, because they I, I so is there because a way? I was so yeah, I'm interested in how I, he I was so conclusion. confused. I said, "Can I just ask what type of Christian you are?" Yep. And he said I'm an orphan. He's so this is usually more of like a Catholic talking point from the Vatican, Second Vatican yeah. Council. But the, the way in which they, people would normally say this is that God isn't going to judge you based on what you do not have access to know it, right? So let's say that you're a Muslim in a remote tribe that didn't have access to no, no, he was saying understanding me, he was specifying it to me. The oh, to you. I said to him, I said, okay, I, I believe in Christ, but I don't yeah, believe in Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. God. We can't comment on, on his that statement one, yeah. without knowing what he said in the more context. No, so, so he might have applied context. ignorance, but I said it's not ignorance, I know this. Okay. Like, yeah, I, I think what he was trying to say is on uh, a deed's character, you, I could. Mm -mm. We don't, no, we, 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 don't we, we don't, that's, 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 not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not how it works for us. So wait, that's so no, they don't, don't believe that either. People that are, happen to be Muslim. We don't, we don't no, think that, that anyone... That wasn't, no, no, that wasn't, that wasn't saying, the statement, really no, no. He was saying on character and deeds. Yeah, uh, so... Surely, you, surely we believe that they are Christians that are good people. So, so... Um, but they're not. No, no one is a good person no, 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 in and of themselves, of themselves right? Yeah. Because I don't think any sex. we have a no, no, nature which is inclined doing, more towards evil. How they are, yeah, we wouldn't say, we wouldn't say that anyone warrants the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. God would be just to condemn everyone to hell, but the reason why some of us are saved is because of God's grace in itself so we are saved we, we, we would say we're saved piece. yeah we would say yeah. we're saved by God's grace yeah. but it's not that we work our way up to the kingdom of heaven do deeds good, good yeah. deeds don't aren't what saves us yeah, yeah. and we agree we, we agree we have to save in Islam but what I'm asking you is can a Muslim under your belief system enter heaven it, it depends what you mean right so if you take a more Catholic understanding which is what I lean towards it would be if they're in like a remote tribe in which they couldn't have heard about Christianity and they've done their best to serve God and God has had that grace upon them, then it is possible that they may go to heaven. Yeah. However, if we're if talking about Christ, someone that has, yeah, if you've rejected, as a savior, and I say that, I yeah, and if you've that. rejected the gospel, then it's a straight no. Then, then yeah, it's hell. It okay. no. Straight no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Straight you know, no. I'm glad you said this because you know when this chap told me this last week, mm -hmm. I said to him also, I can go and do what I want. I will go to heaven. I don't need to believe in Christ. You just said I can be a Muslim and go to heaven. I said, so what's the point of your religion? Uh, yes. Because it's right. Because if you, for example. If you don't have to be a Muslim to go to heaven, then we wouldn't be out here talking about it. Right? Exactly. At that point, you're just having every Abrahamic religion go to heaven. I don't know.